How's it going guys? We have a medium difficulty question for surgery 2CK. If you're studying for step one, relax. All right, I'll tell you some high yield points regarding gastro. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give it a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, melon underscore medical, M-E-H-L-N-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram grouping channel down below. Now start the clip. 46-year-old man. Two-day history, severe abdo pain. Drinks a pint of whiskey daily. Temperature 102 Fahrenheit. CTV abdomen is shown. ERCP is performed. Question wants to know what's most likely to suggest poor prognosis in this patient. So you look at the CT here, no idea what we're fucking looking at. I drew this arrow. Okay, this is pointing out a pancreatic pseudocyst. On the NBME for 2CK surgery, they don't have this arrow here, but they have a nearly identical CT. It's a big fucking fluid collection within the pancreas. Now, if you're studying for step one, you need to know that obviously an alcoholic who has severe abdo pain, it's acute pancreatitis, the pain need not radiate to the back, okay? And a pseudocyst is a fluid collection where there are no actual concrete walls encapsulating that fluid. So we don't call it a cyst. It's just the parenchyma of the pancreas itself that's conveniently holding the fluid together. So it's called a pseudocyst. And on the 2CK surgery question, when they show you the same CT without the arrow, they ask for the next best step in management, and the answer is ERCP. Okay, so endoscopic retrograde clindial pancreatography. So apparently we can drain the fluid internally via ERCP. But this question, I didn't want to make a next best step in management, uh, making it about uh, which of the following uh, factors slash findings, poor tens, poor prognosis. So let's just whip the answers. Choice A, age less than 55, wrong fucking answer. So look, even if you're not sure, clearly elderly patients tend to have worse uh, prognosis in terms of their convalescence slash healing than younger patients, okay? You don't have to me memorize the Ranson criteria. Ranson criteria refers to different variables such as age, hepatic enzymes, etc., cetera, uh, on admission and also 48 hours post-admission that reflect uh, prognosis, okay? Number of points relating to prognosis, chance of survival. When you're on your actual surgery rotation, you can bother with memorizing the Ranson criteria for your actual surgery shelf. But for 2CK, you don't need to worry. I'm going to tell you two important points you need to know for your simile. Okay, very fucking ace and clutch right now. So age less than 55 is fucking wrong because as I just said, elderly, uh, worse chance of convalescence or uh, reduced chance of convalescence. Choice BAST under 250, wrong fucking answer. So likewise, even if you're not sure what's going on, obviously elevated hepatic enzymes would be worse. Okay, so let's just continue looking at the answers. Choice C, calcium less than eight, normal range 8.4 to 10.2, correct answer. Now, two points. The first is, and, and I already said you don't have to memorize Ranson criteria. The first very important point for you is familiar, is they are absolutely obsessed with low calcium and high glucose as the two most important poor prognostic indicators in acute pancreatitis. So obviously choice D is wrong, okay, because if we have calcium less than eight or glucose greater than 200, poor prognosis and pancreatitis. I haven't seen USMLE give a fuck about the other Ranson criteria, such as AST greater than 250 or LDH greater than 350. I haven't seen them care, okay? It's calci low calcium and high glucose. Now, another point is they don't often, actually, in fact, I haven't seen them ask uh, this type of question as I had written here, where they say, which of the following is poor prognosis, where they say low calcium or high glucose. I haven't seen them ask it that way. What they will do is give you a big 15 line rambling paragraph where you're not sure what the diagnosis is. And they give you tons of answer choices, like one of those questions where it's like A through M. And you'll see somewhere in the paragraph that there's low calcium and you're like, boom, pancreatitis. Or they'll say low calcium, high glucose, and you're like, boom, pancreatitis. Very easy, okay? So you should become accustomed to looking out, being vigilant for low calcium and high glucose in the setting of pancreatitis to just merely help you diagnose it if you get a difficult vignette. So finally, uh, the set, and I said there's a second high yield point, which is choice E is fucking wrong because your amylase and lipase levels don't reflect prognosis. So whether you're three times the upper limit of normal, which is considered the minimal threshold for diagnosing pancreatitis, or whether you have lipase, amylase that are 10,000, it doesn't relate to prognosis. Okay, so that's the second point. So not just low calcium and high glucose, 
being poor prognostic indicators for pancreatitis, but holy shit, your amylase and lipase levels, even if they're super fucking high, that doesn't mean anything. Okay. They can be lower and the patient can have worse prognosis. So uh, you'll see that occasionally uh, in USMLE questions where you'll get a lipase level that is high or low and you just need to know it doesn't reflect prognosis. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.